Hi folks, in this lecture I'll be explaining to you Lambda access points. So previously I had shown you how you can create access points and connect it to your S3. So access points enable you to have multiple URL or S3 endpoints that can be used by different users or different applications to connect to the same bucket using different policies. Now, what is the use of a Lambda access point? So using Lambda access point, you can actually transform the data that you get from the S3 access point and convert it into something that would be more appropriate or more useful. So in this particular example, what I will show you is I will have an S3 bucket that has a CSV data and that CSV data will be transformed into an object, a JSON object using the Lambda function. So this is a very common use case. For example, you have an application that is reading an S3 bucket that contains CSV data and you want it transformed into, let's assume a JSON object. So rather than doing it at the source, or should I say rather than doing it at the application, you can use the object Lambda access point to convert it and then send it as a JSON directly to the application rather than having it converted in the application. So let's see how this works. So let's start by creating an S3 bucket. I click on S3. I'll create a bucket. And within this bucket, I'll upload a CSV file. Now that I've created this CSV file, now I have to create an access point for this particular bucket. I'll close this. Create an access point. And I would leave everything as default and I'll click on the access point. So this, so the next thing I'll do is I'll try to access my access point URL. So I'll go to test CSV and I'll use the S3 URL to see if I'm able to access test.csv. So for doing that, I'll open my cloud shell. So now because I'm the object owner of this particular access point, I should have no problems connecting to the CSV file. If you want to give other users permissions, then you can go check out my other video where I have shown how using bucket policies, you can give different users access to the access point. So I will send a link in the description below. So meanwhile, let's try to connect using the ACL. And because I'm the object owner, like I said before, I should have no problem trying to access that particular object. So I'll do an AWS S3 CP. And let me get the S3 URL. And I will copy this into a text file called ABC. And let me just get that ABC.txt. So you can see that I was able to read that particular file. So this was the content of the file. So it's just a CSV file with field one, field two and values of A and B. So our main intention now is to convert this into a JSON object so that an application or user can access it not as a CSV, but as a JSON file. So, so now that we have access to the access point and we've created the bucket let's go ahead and create the lambda so i go back to my s3 console i'll click on the object lambda access point here i've already created one so let's create another object lambda access point so let me name this particular object lambda So here I have to 
connect to the access point so that's something you need to remember you have to connect not to the main s3 bucket but to the access point that you created so i'll click on browse so this was my access point that i just created so i'll choose this and then i need to choose a particular function so i have already created one function so i'll connect that particular function to this particular access point and after I've done that, I'll explain to you how the particular Lambda works. So this hello world is the function that I have. And I click on create object X point. So now let's go back to that hello world function and let's see how that works. So the first thing we do is we get all the libraries that we want. So we need two libraries, the AWS and the Axios library. The Axios library is just to make API calls, whereas the AWS SDK is to connect to the S3 as well as other SDK related functionality. So let's implement the code. Now this particular hello world Lambda is connected to the access point. Therefore, this particular event object will contain the S3 URL through which you can access that particular data of the object. So let's do that. So the first thing you do is from the event object, you get the get object context. And within this get object context, you need to get three keys, the output route, the output token and the input URL. So now using this input S3 URL, let's get the data for that particular object. So the first thing we do is we will use the Axios library to get the output. So we'll be using the await. And the URL would be this. So after we got the response, the data would be in response.data. So after this, we'll have to use an S3 function that was recently created for access point. So let's get that information for that particular function. Now, as you can see that this particular function requires a param. This particular param should contain these two mandatory fields, that is the request route and the request token. So these two we can get from the event object. And apart from this, we can also have the transform data written within this particular right get object response. So let's proceed and let's try to use this particular function. I've written the code for the S3 right get object response and I have changed it to a promise. And the input for the params, like I previously mentioned, is the request route and the request token. <clears throat> and here you can also write your transform data, but for the time being, I'm just outputting the data I get from this particular input S3 URL and the status code of 200. So I have deployed this, so let's run this particular Lambda. So to trigger your particular Lambda that you just created, you can go back to your object Lambda access point in your S3 console. And you can choose the file that you've just uploaded, click on actions and open or download it. Once you do this, that Lambda gets triggered and it transforms the data within this particular test.csv. So I'll open this. Now, because I have not made any transformation, it will show the data as it is. So now let's do one thing. Let's transform this data. So to do that, I've got a small, small snippet of code that I took from a website. The link to that particular website I'll share with you in the description below. So what this does is it just inputs us CSV and outputs a JSON file. So I'll be using this particular snippet of code. So I have pasted this snippet of code. Now let me use this particular piece of code. So now what I'll be doing is I'll be using the CSV JSON and the input would be the response that I get from the input S3 URL. And this final data, I'll be passing it back to the output. So instead of the response or data, I'll just paste this. And let me just deploy this and let's run this piece of code again. Again, I go back to my S3 and again, I'll open this particular CSV again.
this time it failed that's probably because you need to convert that object into a string so i'll go back to my piece of code again here i'll do a json.stringify and let me just cut this and paste it and i'll deploy it once again So let's run it once more. So this time you can see that it got converted into a JSON. And this particular output you can either send to a user or an application as you wish. So this is how you use a Lambda access point. I hope this was useful and please do not forget to subscribe and like this video. Thank you.